What's up YouTube? Haterade Cowboy here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk to you about the HD Fury Diva. This is one of the components that I have in my rack. But what is the HD Fury Diva? Well, it's a lot of things. It's an HDMI switcher. It's an upscaler. But what I really want to talk to you about is EDID. Now, some of you may be wondering, what in the world is EDID? EDID stands for Extended Display Identification Data. What does that mean? EDID is a metadata format used for displays to communicate their capabilities to a video source. So to make that a little bit easier to understand, when you buy a TV or any type of media player or anything that you hook up to your TV, they all talk to each other. So let's say you buy a 4K Sony TV with HDR, and then you buy a Samsung Blu-ray player 4K with HDR. They're gonna talk to each other. When you plug that Samsung Blu-ray player into your TV, the TV's gonna say, hello, I'm a Sony TV. I can do 480p, 720p, 1080p, and 4K HDR. What can you do? And then the Samsung Blu-ray player is gonna say, hello, I'm a Samsung Blu-ray player. I can play 480p, 1080p, 720p, and 4K, but I can't do HDR. So the TV is gonna say, well, if you can't do that, I'm gonna give you a black screen. Or you may get some type of message that says cannot display image. We've all seen it. So that's what EDID does. It sends metadata information back and forth from your TV and your Blu-ray player or Apple TV 4K or some other streaming device. That's where the HD Fury Diva comes in. The HD Fury Diva is basically able to manipulate the metadata that is sent from your Blu-ray player or streaming, streaming device to your TV, or in this case, in my case, a projector. Now, anybody that has a projector knows that you cannot get Dolby Vision. HDR10, yes, but there are no projectors currently with Dolby Vision, unless, you have an HD Fury Diva. This device is able to basically trick your projector or TV into thinking that it can do Dolby Vision. So I have an Epson 5040UB projector that cannot display Dolby Vision. And I have an Apple TV 4K that can do Dolby Vision. So whenever I try to switch over to the Dolby Vision format on my Apple TV 4K, I get a blank screen for maybe five to 10 seconds. And then I get a message that says reverting back to previous resolution. This is because my projector is not Dolby Vision capable. However, I am able to get Dolby Vision from my Apple TV 4K to my projector. How? The HD Fury Diva 4K. It allows me to do this via low latency Dolby Vision. The HD Fury Diva is capable of both standard Dolby Vision and low latency Dolby Vision. Now, I'm not going to go into depth about what Dolby Vision and HDR is. I think pretty much everybody knows now what that is. The main reason I wanted to do this video is to show you how you can get Dolby Vision or even HDR10 if your projector or TV is not capable of it via the HD Fury Diva. So I'm going to show you that on the computer. All right, so I am at my computer and I have the web GUI pulled up for the HD Fury Diva. So you can connect this to the internet and actually you have to connect this to the internet to be able to really utilize it the way it needs to be utilized. Now there are, there's an on-screen display on the actual device. It's an OLED display and it has buttons on the side that you can actually control it but who wants to do that you know who wants to stand at the rack or wherever this device is going to be and, and control it now the good thing about this is I can control the diva from my from my phone from my iPad from my desktop from my laptop so you can literally be anywhere in the house and you can control this most people are, are going to be in their living room or theater room, wherever they're utilizing this device. 
but it's good that you have the option to use multiple devices so this device can get really 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 technical and there's a lot of stuff in here that you can configure I'm still learning stuff I'm still messing with it so I'm not gonna go into like a deep dive of what this all can do I just want to show you like basic how you can get Dolby Vision and even HDR 10 on your display if it doesn't natively support it so here we have the info tab and the info tab is going to show you the incoming source and then it's going to show you what's actually being output now I don't have my projector and all my devices turned on in the theater right now so it's not going to show anything but this is where you will see on this tab it'll show you you know it'll show you the refresh rate it'll show you the you know whether you're you have 720p 1080p 4k 60 hertz you know 4 to 4 to 4 chroma sampling this is where it'll show you all that stuff the edid so this right here custom this is what you want to select I'm not going to go over all this other stuff because it gets a little bit technical and it's kind of hard to to try to ex explain I when I first got it I kind of played around with it that's the kind of person that I am I like to kind of play around with things myself first to see if I can understand it that's just how I am most people you would probably I would encourage you to read the manual but you know I like to consider myself as tech savvy so I was I was confused at first but I was able to play around with it and figure some stuff out and there's other things that you know I'm still trying to learn but right here custom this is where you can select so there ha it has different presets that you can select so you have four inputs they all display 4k 60 you know 4k HDR 60 FPS this is where you can tell so let's say I'm using my like I have an Nvidia Shield TV that doesn't have Dolby Vision on it I believe it's Dolby Vision capable but at the time they didn't release the 2017 version with Dolby Vision and I think because of you know politics and I think in order for them to be able to get Dolby Vision on it they would have to get into licensing and all that stuff so that's why they released the newer version the newer version is really not that much different but you have presets that you can select so as you can see here there's different presets I can select a low latency Dolby Vision on an LG TV I can select a Dolby Vision you know from from a Vizio LG Sony so this is really cool because the, the way that I understand that it works is it takes the metadata or the information from you know a certain TV that has Dolby Vision or HDR10 and they created these presets that you can select and it sends that information from the diva to your TV or projector and you're able to get Dolby Vision don't ask me how it works I just know that it does work I don't know all the ins and outs behind this so you know I'm, I'm not like this HD Fury tech savvy person I just know that it works so you have all these different presets that you could select 4k 60 12-bit HDR BT 2020 you know you can get stereo sound all sound and just to throw this in this works with Dolby Atmos and DTS X anything that I have plugged into it I still get you know Dolby Atmos it doesn't affect anything it actually improves your your devices so I mean there's there's all kinds of presets you can do 1080p if you want to you can it, this thing does downscaling as well so this is where you would go for your presets and these are currently the presets that I have on my devices now here you can do the scaler again I'm not going to do like a deep dive into this but you can it's a scaler so you know I can I can tell it when when an input signal comes in that's 4k 60 I can have the HD diva follow that so it doesn't change anything or I can you know change the co the color chroma sampling 
4K 30, same thing. 1080p, I can tell it, which I'm telling it right now, to upscale to 4K 60. So when there's a 1080p 60 frames per second source that's coming in, I can have the HD Diva scale it up to 4K 60. Or I can have it to just not do any scaling, just keep it the same. Same thing 1080p. I can have it upscale to 4K 30 frames per second, or I can leave it the same. Or you can select, you know, no upscaling at all, and it'll just bypass all these things. But these are my settings. And then you have your HDR tab, Dolby Vision tab, and this is what I was talking about. It can get, you can get like a, you can really do a deep dive on this thing, and you can do all kinds of stuff. I'm still learning some of the ins and outs of it. There is a kind of like a tutorial on how to manually, manually configure your HD Fury Diva to do Dolby Vision, and I'll post that in the in the description. I tried it, and it could just be my setup, but I tried it, and I was not able to get Dolby Vision. So before I was using the presets, and then I went and did the tutorial, followed all the steps step by step, and for whatever reason, I couldn't get Dolby Vision anymore. So, you know, disclaimer, I don't know, maybe that was just my setup. So I just went back to the presets. And then you have your on-screen display. So there's also an on-screen display on your TV or your projector. And what it does is whenever whenever it changes, whenever the display changes or you know the resolution changes, there's an on-screen display that will show up on your TV and it will tell you everything that's being displayed the resolution the frame rate you know fps dolby vision all that stuff i ended up turning it off to me it just got a little bit annoying you can change how long it stays on screen i think originally i don't remember what it was but it stayed on kind of a long time um, i changed it to five seconds but eventually it just kind of got annoying i mean i know what my I know what my you know my projector is displaying. I rip all my, my all my movies to MKV, and I use Plex, so I pretty much know what it's displaying. And if I want to see what's actually being displayed, I can just go back to info. So, but you can control all that stuff, and then you can do CC, eARC. I don't really mess with all that macros. You can change macros, and that, this is you kind of use this on the tutorial that I'll post, you, you use this information. And then you have tools. I don't really use this very much. And then config. You can do some extensive configurations. You can reset the device, reboot it. You can back up your, you know, you can do an import export of your configuration. So it's a really, really nice tool. I really enjoy it. So just to give you kind of a, a, a recap, um, I'm using an NVIDIA Shield. I'm using an Xbox Series X and an Apple TV. I'm able to get Dolby Vision on all of those now. Obviously, the Apple TV 4K and the Xbox Series X supports it natively, but I couldn't get it before because my projector was not Dolby Vision capable, but now I can get it, and it looks, it looks amazing. I really enjoy it. Some really the only negative thing that I could say about it is randomly, ever so often, I will not get a picture. Like it loses picture and I get a blank screen. And I've noticed that it does that when I'm watching Plex on my NVIDIA Shield. Like if I'm watching something and I hit stop, and you know, when you on your TV or your projector, that's not eARC, um, it when you stop a video source it has to do that handshake again and you get that black screen for you know a few seconds and then it goes back to you know the display I've noticed it does it that's the only time that it does it so I'm thinking that it just freaks out and it gets confused and then I just get a blank screen and the only way to fix that is to unplug the power from the HD Fury Diva for a couple of seconds plug it back in and then it works so that's kind of annoying. It doesn't happen very often, and there's no way to tell when it's going to happen. It just happens, but to me, it's 
it's something that I, I'm willing to, to deal with. So uh, I, now one thing I wanted to notice or say to the audience is that on my NVIDIA Shield before, I don't know if you guys have seen Gemini Man, but Gemini Man was recorded in 60 frames per second. Well, on the NVIDIA Shield, I couldn't get 60 frames per second on Gemini Man. I could get 30 frames per second 4K. Now I can get it 4K 60 frames per second. However, it's not 444. I believe it's like 422 or 420. And I can I can post in the description what that means. I'm not gonna discuss that here. But on 4K Blu-ray, like a standard 4K Blu-ray, you're gonna get you know 4K 23.976 FPS and 444. But I just wanted to let you know that you know before I was not able to get 60 frames per second on Gemini Man because it's a high frame rate, high frame rate. And now I do get it, and it looks amazing. I wish studios would adopt this 60 frames per second because it just it looks amazing. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and you know, check it out. It's it's a little pricey for what it is, but on the flip side, you'll probably end up spending more if you just go buy a TV because you want Dolby Vision. You know. I wouldn't recommend going and buying a small TV if you have like, you know, a 55 inch TV or 60, 70 inch TV that doesn't have Dolby Vision, you're going to end up spending, spending a lot more money. You know, I, I believe the MSRP on this device is $399. I was able to pick it up on Amazon and I think you can buy it directly from HD Fury on the website. So I'll post a, a link to all that stuff, but I just wanted to make a video simple video that shows you how you can get Dolby Vision if you don't have a Dolby Vision capable TV and obviously if you have a projector you're not going to get Dolby Vision on it anyway so you know some of the colors may be a little bit compressed because at least for a mine I have the 5040 so it doesn't it doesn't do some of the the, the full color that the 5050 does but it still looks good and I don't have to go out and buy another projector right now just because you know I want you know better better image. The HD Fury Diva is able to give that to me. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video on the HD Fury Diva and how you can get Dolby Vision on your non-Dolby Vision compatible projectors or TVs. So the only really negative thing I can say about the HD Fury Diva is that every once in a while I lose picture and I can't get it back. And walking over to the HD Fury Diva, looking at the OLED screen, it's frozen. And I think this is because sometimes it just freaks out when you switch to a different source or a different resolution. It doesn't happen very often, but it, it does happen sometimes. So that's kind of annoying, but for the most part, it's a good product. The HD Fury Diva, it's a little pricey, but for what it does, I think it's worth it. So what are your thoughts on the HD Fury Diva? Are you going to pick one up? Let me know in the comments. Also, if this is your first time visiting my channel, please like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell notification so you know when the next video drops. See you guys later.